Good morning, guys. Welcome to my Monday morning rant for Monday, the 7th of June, 2021. A bit chilly this morning. Um, I actually got woken up by some dude in a um, high-vis jacket asking me if I own any of the cars on the street. And Mia was the one who first heard the doorbell, wasn't me. She did the uh, full-on intense face like a little dog jumping off the bed. So I kind of knew it must have been doorbell. And, you know, I haven't been doing any of that retail therapy lately, so I knew it wasn't going to be another guitar or anything like that. I've been uh, hovering over buy now buttons, but, you know, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not like I've got heaps of money to, to, to blow at the moment anyway, so um, just being a bit tighter than usual. Um, but last week was a good week. Um, I had an awesome shoot and hangs with Viv and Ellie in Coogee. Turns out uh, the Coogee Bay has some new sort of boutique um, hotel rooms. Um, they're really cute. They're really kitschy old school sort of style and uh what's nice about it is um all of the hallways aligned with photography that was taken at selena's and man i hadn't thought about or heard about selena's in so many years you know selena's was a real a real proper primo rock and roll venue in sydney uh back in the day i'd say back in the 90s um all the big bands that would come in from overseas would do the Horton Pavilion, do the big gig, but you'd usually find that they also played at Selena's and that was the gig to catch, you know, like the Horton's just, the Horton Pavilion has always been this massive boomy box that could just never get the sound right in there. It's just uh, bouncing off the walls everywhere. It was just shit, really boomy and uh, bassy. And um, Selena's was s- small enough to, to be intimate, but large enough to hold a fair few people. I think uh, one of the largest bands I saw there was Hole, um, Courtney Love, Kurt Cobain's ex-wife. And uh, yeah, brought back a shit ton of memories and, uh, you know, Michael Hutchins and Rose Tattoo and all these awesome, really awesome black and white photographs everywhere. Uh, And even like a a rock and roll book inside the uh, hotel room itself. Um, but that was fun. Um, got really drunk as usual. Like I think when I hang out with Viv and Ellie both, uh, we tend to get a little bit boozy. Ellie likes to have a drink or, or three. Uh, and uh, Viv brought the um, Neo, N-I-O, Neo cocktails, but they come in these really sexy, thin uh, boxes. Um and they're just a cocktail in a bag, really, but in this sexy packaging, and they're really strong, and they they're really good. I mean, they 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 they're very clear and and um, colorful and taste amazing. And uh, the last time I had those, I actually passed out. So this time, um, I got pretty trashed as well. But um, at some stage that night, uh, I decided to go for um. I decided to go, right? So so I'm, I'm looking for a cab and like there were no cabs. It was pretty late. I think it was like, I don't know, 9.30, 10 o'clock, something like that. And um, couldn't, find, couldn't find a cab. And I'm like, it's fucking Coogee Beach, you know. I'm only the next beach down. So I just started walking and I walked at home and um, something really strange <laughs> was going on. Like I was really drunk, but I was so happy drunk, you know, and... Um, I start walking up the hill and I, I get to the top of the hill and I pass um a kite shop, like uh, this dude that just still makes and sells kites. And I look in the window and, and, and there he was like in the corner, in the back corner of the shop. He's sitting there working on making kites at that time of night. And I thought that was really cool. And uh, a bit further down, there's an old um, furniture repair place upholstery sort of place and it's been there forever like I, ever since i can remember and i go past there and i see uh, the lights are still on in there 
and there's a photo of uh, someone's daughter on the wall. And there he is, this old dude, again, in the back, like in the back, I could just make him out. He was sitting there working on furniture. And I just thought, wow, these guys are like, they found their thing, you know? It's like it's late at night and they probably should be home or um, should be chilling. But, hey, they're chilling doing their thing and they're in the zone and uh, just made me really happy to see. And um, I get a little bit closer to my place and I hear all this pitter-patter coming around the corner. And I'm, like, greeted by, like, I don't know, six, seven or eight elderly women all in their sports gear and they're all jogging with a personal trainer. At that time of night, I'm like, what the f- I, I must have been smiling. Or I, must have, I must have had my mouth open or something because they were all like smiling back at me and <laughs> waving. <laughs> and they're like, oh, hi, like this. I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? Um, and then I passed like the, the last shop on, on, on near my place is a hairdresser. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of hairdressers in there working on a couple of clients late at night. And they were all smiling back at me. I'm, again, I must have been smiling. And I just couldn't help. I just couldn't help being happy. Like I had like Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World in my head. <laughs> it was cheesy as fuck. And I was just so stoked that like instead of um, catching an Uber or a taxi and not seeing any of that, that I got to see all of that and I got to feel it all. And uh, it was such, such a good vibe. Um. So, yeah, I was in good spirits. Um, moving on. Uh, I have been playing a computer game called Biomutant. I followed it maybe like two, two, three, maybe three years ago. Uh, it looks really cool. Maybe even four years ago I heard about it. And uh, um, it's like a kung fu fable. And um, I did the usual thing. I watched a few YouTube videos. And this is one guy. He's an Australian guy. His name is Skillup skill up um he has seven hundred and nine thousand subscribers and he's got to be um one of the biggest or definitely the biggest independent uh games reviewer on youtube and uh, he's been at it for so many years and i absolutely love the amount of effort that this guy puts into his videos his style and how they flow and he writes a very um intricate script and just reads it out but um uses great analogies and he's just a really good reviewer and he's he's really good at writing essays uh it's like a a review essay style and um over the years i've found that when he goes nuts about a game and reviews it with such uh intensity and suggests people highly suggests people to buy something that he loves i end up not loving the stuff that he loves um which has made it really easy for me because i still enjoy watching his videos but if he really loves something i know that i'm probably not going to like it and i think it's just a really good way to use a review you know like a lot of people out there are probably like trying to find someone that likes everything that they like so that they can just uh, follow that reviewer's advice but i find it easier to find a person who's very reputable and if he really loves stuff that you hate then just don't buy it and uh so he reviewed biomutant and he fucking hated it and i'm like oh my god thank god because i've been following this game for so many years and if he was to really love it i'd be really worried so uh, i bought it and um it wasn't cheap you know it was a hundred bucks and um I've been loving it. I've been loving it. It's not one of those games that you cram in like um, hours to level up or nothing like that. It's just a, it's, it's like a kid's game. It's like a fable. It's the only way I can sort of explain it. It's like a fable. You can pace yourself and it's got a narrator. It's a really endearing, uh, sweet, sweet game. It doesn't feel violent whatsoever. It just feels like it's full of life lessons in there. It's very zen. Um, yeah, it's very, it's a really Zen like game and I really like it. I'm really enjoying it. I've put like 13 hours or so into it and I'm not in any kind of rush to finish it. It's just one of those little things that I pick up for an hour a day 
and uh, explore and uh, chip away at, and um, uh, it's really cool. Um, uh, moving on, um, I put a call out on um, Facebook, which uh, about my photography, and I don't I don't do this because. Uh, you know, obviously over the years I've come to realize that the work that I do is not really accepted by a lot of people. I mean, even on Reddit over the last few years, I've had so much of my stuff removed. Um, when I comment on other photography uh, Reddits, people on the internet, especially on Reddit, tend to be good stalkers. So they find out who I am and what I do. And they're like, oh, he's only on here to promote his Patreon. But hey, I'm a fucking legitimate photographer as well. So I'm allowed to post um shots from africa uh on a photography subreddit you know it's not like i'm promoting my patreon at all i'm just a photographer promoting my work um so yeah it's been really tough you know like in getting banned on instagram and all that kind of shit whatever right but um there's been a a facebook group uh that's a commercial one where it's more about new south wales sort of sydney based models, designers, photographers. Uh, it's a, a, a Facebook group that allows people to post up jobs basically, right? And look for talent, um, whether it's paid or TFP or whatever. And um, I've seen dramas unfold there and I've seen a whole lot of stupidity on there and over the years and I've just never, uh, I've never posted anything. Um, but I took a risk. I was really constructive in what I wrote. And I even left a note at the bottom to say, moderators, if you don't um, believe that this suits your Facebook group, then I totally understand. Just delete it, you know. But um, one of the moderators actually got back to me, which was really cool. And I had to make a few adjustments. They wanted me to remove the fact that some of my clients uh, work in the adult industry and or in the sex industry. Um, and I don't see why. Like I still, that's the bit that I don't get. It's like people that work in the sex industry need professional designers and photographers just as much as any other commercial venture does um, to use on their social media, on their escort listings and stuff like that. I mean, uh, it's just so sad that this stuff is restricted or banned or uh, just... Uh, not respected um i mean it's completely legal so i don't understand why it feels so illegal um but yeah it was it was um it was passed as soon as i got rid of the the little bit about you know a lot of my clients are sex workers or my little story about how i got into it and how um as a photographer i found that i was more likely to be paid by sex workers as opposed to just girls who want to have a big Instagram account, you know, um, uh, want to be models kind of thing. Right. So it's up there and, uh, the instantly, like, even though I wrote, um, please send me a private message or a direct message. If you're interested, people instantly started writing underneath the post itself that they were interested, but you know that I think that's just the internet these days. Like I just I don't think you can expect people to read, and, and I, I wrote a lot. So I think when you write a lot, especially, you can't expect people to read. And I think it's just Facebook. You know, like last week I ranted about like Facebook Marketplace and how people just don't read and ask you s s questions that are you clearly listed, um, but they're still asking you the same questions anyway. Um, and it's like you know you'd think it would be in people's best interest to read especially if i'm offering photo shoots for patreon you know like um oh, by the way that's what i that's what i posted up for. Uh, you know my my patreon uh i have like you know 40 or so patrons that support me and i make just as money from my pa patreon as i do with the actual shoot so it's like a 50 50 split and uh you know it's like a couple of almost a couple of grand a month and um these guys are paying like $50 US a month to see my artwork, you know, to see my work, you know, like they're, they're getting shots every single day, every single shoot I do about 50 or so shots. And I can only use like three or four of them on Instagram. The rest of them are just uh, um, against the uh, rules, you know, so I post them all on, on Patreon. And I'm so grateful that 
that fifty dollars US a month is it's a lot of money. It's it's more money than I could afford to pay someone. And I'm just so glad they're not throwing it into a porn site. You know, like it's they're not paying they're not paying fifty bucks US a month for porn. They're they're paying for my photography. It's fucking unreal. Um, um, I really appreciate the the support. And um, so so yeah. Uh, I want to shoot uh, more people like they see a lot of Viv, they see a lot of Abby and like, you know, um, they see a lot of the usual suspects and I'm like, that's not a bad thing, but I want to shoot more content, varied content for them. So uh, that's what the call out was for was to say, look, I'm more than happy to do some free shoots this month. Um, But there's a catch and the catch is that uh, whilst the photos are yours to keep, the final edited photos are yours to do whatever you want with them. Um, I want to be able to use them on my Patreon. So that's why I negate my fee. Uh, you get your, you know, 30, 40, 50 edited photos. I get to use them on my Patreon and you can do whatever you want with them. Um, so, yeah, it looks like uh, I've got like four or five girls lined up uh, already. Um, it's going to be really busy times again. Um, lining them all up as of next week. So I will be busy shooting again. I have, I'm going to have to pick the pace up, you know. Uh, I, I've slowed down a lot on how fast I edit photos, but I'm going to have to pick that pace up again, uh, which is fine. I can get in the zone. Um, so, yeah, uh, another thing, just in relation to my photography, I posted up um, a photo that I took of Viv last week in between some blinds, like sort of voyeuristic style. And then it reminded me of like when I first did it with Rosamina, many years ago. So I posted up that photo and um, it got a lot of comments. You know, a lot of people like like my older stuff. And um, one guy, uh, Paul Petch in particular, he's a great sort of outdoors photographer um, from New Zealand. And he mentioned that he, because he knew the photo and he, he photos and he remembered them. And um, he said he preferred my old sort of more artistic style than the newer stuff I'm doing and you know it reminds me of that um regurgitator song like I love your old stuff better than your new stuff and it's like um I agree you know like I agree that I had I was much more artistic with my photography at some stage especially working with artists like Kasha Zoo and Rosamina um just real amazing models who um definitely art nude models you know not like um I wouldn't call that the sex industry or the adult industry. So um, I think the sexual charge, if there was one back then, was much more subtle and uh, than it is now in my work. So, you know, that got me thinking. Um, I really am primarily an artist and I would like to go back to doing more artistic shots. While I... Well, I still find my work artistic, especially the ones that are really in the moment. And, you know, I'm not framing as hard and I'm trying to get those off the cuff shots or those happy accidents where I get a shot and it captures the vibe and it captures that in the moment kind of thing, the concept of being in the moment. Um, It just captures it so well that I love it more than the shots that are completely in focus and framed well. Um, I'm still doing that. But again, a lot of it is just uh, too rude to post because there's nudity in it, so I can't post it anywhere. Um, So again, the guys on Patreon tend to get my best work. Um, So yeah, maybe, you know, maybe I'll take a step back and and, uh, which, you know, everyone's got to do it every now and then, right? You got to take a step back and look at yourself and um, figure out where you're at. Um, And speaking of a step back, I've kind of realized that in all 30 years that I've been playing the guitar, I've been holding the guitar pick wrong. Um, I hold it really strange. I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, like, like, like I hold it like that. That's how I hold my pick. And you're, you're sort of meant to hold it like, like that. You're meant to pick like that instead of like holding it like, like that. So I don't, I, you know, it is a huge change to go from 30 years of holding it like this to like holding it how you meant to. And uh, it's no wonder that I've never been able to do pinch harmonics because 
you can't do a pinch harmonic from this from holding a pick like this you've got to hold it like this so that you can use the scrape the string with the edge of your thumb and so yeah the other night uh just over the weekend i started holding the pick correctly and man i'm doing pinch harmonics by fucking accident now i mean i'm doing them all the time i'm like oh my god and th there's more feel in in this in the sound um you know when they say tone is in the fingers man a lot of it's how you hold your pick hey and how you attack the strings so um it's a huge step backwards to undo your bad habits it's so hard to do but it's a it's a huge step backwards but it's only going to be many many more steps forward if i learn how to hold a pick right and i know there's no exact right or wrongs you know um sometimes people just uh have a unique way of doing things and that's okay but i know that if i learn how to hold the pick right i'm gonna get even more tone out of my guitars and um i'm gonna be a better player so i'm excited i'm excited to go back to go forwards um it's a really really annoying one but i'm going to stick with it and um i'm i'm i'm, I'm really excited to see where i'm going to be in a couple of months from now when it becomes second nature and i'll be able to do more more things and have more tricks so yeah, I'm going to leave it at that guys. Um, I've got photos to edit and um, going to hop on socials and talk to a lot of people about uh, the process of organizing a shoot. You know, that whole bring a suitcase of, of outfits if you have to. Don't just bring the one. Like I, I, like, I like having choices on the day and uh, to not really necessarily organize a theme for a shoot before the shoot and just to see what models have brought and what accessories they've got and just what the weather's like and what the vibe is like and um just uh do stuff on the fly i kind of like that so i think um it's going to take a little bit of time that's why i've given it this week to just talk to these models who are interested in shooting and just figure out where they're at what they're expecting um you know a lot of the time, if they have a particular image they want to go for, I'm all ears. I'm more than happy to try. Um, should be an interesting week. And uh, I hope you guys all have a good week. Uh, I shall catch you guys in the next one. See yous.